dear ones, it's Alice. I'm heading off for a hike with the Sierra Club and I'm on the road, so you'll have to forgive me for lack of eye contact. But I thought while it's fresh um, that I would explain something. Uh, I'm going to try and make a, a, like a, a collage of it to, sh to show you visually. But um, I, I doubt you'll understand the collage if I don't explain it too. So that's why I'm talking right now. Uh, if you can imagine your soul field as like a huge um, uh, diamond, diamond of shape, no, a huge crystal of light shaped like a kind of like a sphere but with facets like a diamond and full of light okay and in the middle of that there's a in the middle of that crystal that that sphere crystal which is the soul field there's um there's like a um a vertical um band of a bright bright white light okay and that is our pranic column or pranic tube and just in the center of that pranic tube, in the center of the soul field, there's a um, there's a hologram, which looks like your physical form, okay? But however, it's not solid like you see it. All right, the the um, the hologram is is shining uh, like particles of light that turn and change and somehow appear to be the physical form, okay? So in the representation that I'm going to be making, the collage that I'm going to be making, you will see um, the physical form kind of, um, kind of semi-transparent, if I can get it to work like that. And top and bottom and all the way through it, is the pranic column energy that connects to the top and bottom of the soul field. All right. So far, so good. All right. Now, in the human heart, in the very center of the hologram, there's, there's switches. Uh, the kind of switch, <clears throat> if you could imagine um, a light switch, <laughs> if you could imagine a light switch <clears throat> that first you could turn it off, and then you could turn it on to a first position, position number one. And then it, there's a number of more kind of toggles where you could switch the light higher and higher and higher, okay? Um, not exactly brighter and brighter and brighter, but in amplitude, finer and finer and finer, okay? And so this, this light, this change, the changing light show is all taking place inside of your, um, your soul field. Now, a couple of points to make here. Um, the first point is the hologram couldn't exist if your heart energy weren't on, turned on a little. Okay. Now, the thing is, humani humanity at this time, humankind on planet Gaia, isn't quite turned on. The, our hearts are not quite turned on to the first on position. <laughs> so, so, so there's a thing happening with regard to the demonic realm, and I, 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 I had some immensely good help from a, a, a spiritual counselor named Daniela Bree recently, who is good at clear audience, and she visualized. Um, she had a visualization that's very helpful with regard to this half turned on position of the human heart. Of course, all this other stuff, this is not stuff that, uh, but, but this particular visualization was hers. It goes like this. The human soul field, because it has existed in very deep density for, in my opinion, 150,000 years, a very long time, let's say, okay. Um, the axiotonal lines of light within our soul field have have become halfway filled with darkness and in that darkness dwells what is known as the demon realm okay now the universe is fractal and so we are interacting with other soul fields in a way that at this stage of our awareness we can't even imagine <laughs> but but 
the interaction that's taking place on this plane, 3D plane right now, is what's called the dark network. The dark network is demon inhabited from a, from a, like a anthrop anthropological point of view, looking at that as if demons were people. Okay. Um, the, the problem there is the axiotonal lines of light and the, and the amount of light that's flowing through them. Okay, so, so when we interact with other people telepathically on this plane, basically in order to, for our axiotonal line of light message to get to theirs, it has to go through the demon world, okay, and is distorted in that manner, or you could say simply by lack of light. But a lot of people perceive it as like, uh, alive, you know, and it, light is alive, but it's the kind of light that's not very true at all, right? So you have your demon hordes. Now, because we've existed in this dimension for a very long time, there are what Daniela describes as soul wounds, which in some cases uh, it's like um, tears in the soul field or places where the soul field has uh, come slightly apart, ever so slightly apart. And within those areas, between the places where the soul field should have be together, you know, there's like an overlay of dark energy that um, connects through the axiotonal lines, which are half lit to the to the soul field of other people. So, so in 3D, when we hear people, um, when we hear people on like the internet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what we're hearing really is a bunch of demonic energy, which is distorting the true nature of the eternal soul of, of all beings. Okay, so it's not worth much in that state of mind. Okay, so that's the first thing to know is that we have, we have an enemy, and that enemy is the darkness in our axiotonal lines. The remedy is to turn the energy of our heart to the to the first on position. And at that point, our axiotonal lines of light will be flooded with light, and there will be no more distorted messages, okay? Until we do that, we are greatly outnumbered by the demon world, what they call the demon hordes, or the darkness, okay? But it's completely up to us. This is a free will planet. We can do as we like. Okay, Whew, that was a hard one. <clears throat> now, Getting on to the other, um, the other positions of the on switch for the human heart, there are tiers upon tiers of of higher realms, all coexistent with the current third dimensional universe, all existing in the same realm of the same soul field. Our magnificent body of light and our magnificent soul field contains all of these realms. So, since this is a fractal universe, everyone else's soul field also contains all of these uh, higher realms and interacts with our own soul field in each realm uh, in a synchronous manner. And this is one of the great marvels and mysteries of the universe. <laughs> Now, as to the order of the realms, I'm going to try and find for you the exact order of the realms. Um, but I do know that it includes, on the first level, uh, our own team of light beings, such as the Hathors, many other star races. And on subsequent levels, such, such beings as uh, angels and the ascended masters and many other it uh, goes all the way up to source. And so the sequential on, 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 on switches like level two, level three, and level four of our, of our hearts um, change our personal hologram so that we can experience these various realms. Now if we want, we can have several levels of switches or all levels of switches turned on at the same time which which I could I haven't done but I've heard that it's possible and that would be pretty cool to to see the whole light show the entire light show all at once 
happening all at once, wouldn't it? That would be quite an experience, something to look forward to. So, really this video and the collage are about what we're facing in the third 3D world and, and what we have to do in order to escape it. Okay, so no more Demonville, no more dark, dark network, no more darkness whatsoever. First we turn on the light of our hearts and then from there we experience the miracle of all the realms of existence. So, the first picture is a representation of the human soul field uh, with the projection of the hologram of the human body inside it. And then from north to south you see a very bright um, a column of light that uh, people call the pranic tube or the pranic column. At the very top of the soul field is a regeneration chamber for the physical body. Okay, so if there are health issues, either psychological or physical, you can ask up to the top of your soul field for a visit to the regeneration chamber. That's picture number one. So, his second picture shows uh, the soul field of a person with an, a couple of instances of soul wounding. Um, and in one case you have running throughout on the, on the left hand sphere uh, a hairline fracture, what we call a soul fragment, that is caused by some, probably some past lifetime deep trauma maybe being eaten by a saber-toothed tiger or something. And so, uh, and on the right you have, of the left-hand sphere, you have um, a, a wounding that looks more like a jagged tear that is actually Im almost impinging on the hologram, the physical health of the person. So, so into these uh, hairline cracks and into these um, uh, rents or tears in the soul field caused by many, many thousands of years of existence in a dense environment of the third dimension, um, are areas of relative dark, like the flaws in a diamond, you know. They, they just as the diamond attracts the light and reflects the light, the flaws in the diamond uh, um, uh, absorb the dark and and attract the dark. So, so there in our soul fields are these these tiny flaws. Okay, and into these flaws um, through the axiatonal lines, the demon world can flow. So this picture shows two soul fields separated by a 3D concept of distance, of space, and um, and a link between them that has within it. Uh, a demonic influence, that is to say, not total light. Okay, so when we, through telepathy, choose to communicate on the third dimensional level, um, the, our communications are tinged with darkness, necessarily tinged with darkness. So there's a lot of falsehood in them, and because of the nature of the demon world, uh, our our interactions on that level eh, through telepathy tend to set one human against another human soul. Um, so the first thing to realize is that these communications are false and so we know all human souls to be our our eternal friends, our eternal brethren, our, our brethren of the stars and we know the demon world to be false, okay? And any communications that we receive clairaudiently that are less than of love and light are not, are not of our own 
brethren souls there from some other false source, okay? So not to take offense at what other people, we hear from other people because, it, at least on the clairaudient realm, because it proceeds through a false medium to influence us falsely. Picture number two. Let's see. It's kind of hard to, to, to show a picture in the third dimension of something that's simultaneously on many dimensions in the same space and time or in the same field of awareness. So, so what I've done is I've uh, found a series of pictures of the different realms of reality and I'm presenting them on the blog uh, one after the other as links because of copyright problems. So it's going to be up to you to, to imagine each of those pictures one superimposed upon the other so that you have a kind of translucent tiered effect and get the notion of these various multi-dimensional aspects of your soul. Now these actually exist within the human soul as well. Because of the fractal nature of the universe, they, when we turn the switch high enough, the switch of our, our heart's awareness high enough, we actually become, for instance, all planet Earth. We become in our sensitivity and awareness, our hologram becomes all planet Earth. Then, if we turn the switch up higher, we actually become our entire galaxy with the sensitivity, the, the electromagnetic force field of the entire galaxy, the feeling of the incoming flux of light and love, the swirling of, that, of those atmospheres, and so the welcoming of planets of the sun's incoming solar um, winds and so forth would become like the song of our, of our galaxy. Then if we turn the light up even higher, we actually become the universe. Yeah, the entire universe. There's a map of the stars in our hologram at that level. And we can be anywhere in any star system at any time. And beyond that, I understand there are quite a few levels, including our own source and the source of all that is, and so these are things that I haven't experienced quite yet and I'm not too um, conversant with. So one by one I'm going to show you pictures of how our own hologram might appear to us were we to be in these, in these many realms. So first a picture, like a, um, a schematic for the, for the linear mind showing the realms above our own, um, as if they were above our own um, soul field. And then, as we turn the switch up higher, the switch of our own heart field, our own heart energy, which is connected to the source of all that is, then the hologram changes as shown in subsequent pictures, okay? Well, so that's it. Also, one other thing. Um, I'm going to try and make an example showing what it would be like if, um, if we were to experience third dimensional physical world reality at the same time, say, as the realm, the angelic realm. So we would have in that, in that uh, collage, we would have um, a kind of a a translucent uh, physical effect and another translucent angelic effect at the same time. We would be walking in a world of both angels and men. Um, so the same goes for, for all of the dimensions we're able to experience. I used to think, 
we had only 12 dimensions, formed and formless dimensions that we could, we could um, experience and inhabit. And just recently from Lisa Gallus's great website and blog, I heard that she heard that there are hundreds, hundreds of dimensions we can inhabit, perhaps simultaneously. So instead of, um, instead of just two um, dimensional like layerings, simultaneous layerings, we might have a hundred. And through our cosmic mind, we might be able to sort it all out and be all of that all at once. Wouldn't that be so cool? So I forgot one important thing, and that is if we're having trouble getting the heart to turn to the first switch, the first on switch, we can always ask up to the higher realms. You can see more on this in the blogs I wrote on teams. And by that I mean celestial team, angelic team, and ascended master team and all that. Okay. Also.